Hello there brothers and sisters and welcome back to New Bible Study. Today we continue in Malachi, Malachi 1 verse 11. My name will be great among the nations, from where the sun rises to where it sets. In every place incense and pure offerings will be brought to me, because my name will be great among the nations, says Yahweh of hosts. Let's first give you some context and background. In this passage, Yahweh is proclaiming that regardless of the evil priests with their unacceptable sacrifices, the name of Yahweh will, will be great among the nations. One thing to notice is this passage is written in the future tense, will be great. Many believe this is a prophecy of the millennial kingdom which we read about in Revelation 20. However, we believe that since God is the creator of all, and he doesn't need people proclamation or acknowledgement to be great, he just is. However, we do know that one day, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And let's dive into some interesting points of this verse and we'll go through it. My name will be great among the nation, and my name will be great among the nations, says Yahweh of hosts. Twice, God says in this verse, my name will be great among the nations. You might recall that we have read something very this earlier in Malachi. It is part of a greater progression in Malachi. Malachi 1 verse 6 says, Great is the Lord, even beyond the borders of, borders of Israel. And now in verse 11, my name will be great among the nations. Do you see and catch the progression? In verse 6, it was beyond the borders of Israel. And now in verse 11, it's among the nations. In Psalm 145, verse 3, David writes, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. And then the second interesting point is from where the sun rises to where it sets. The wording and thought pattern written in Malachi are taken from Psalm 113, which begins, Praise the Lord, you his servant. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, His glory above the heavens. We can read this in Psalm 113, verse 1 to 4. And this psalm is from the three collections, um, 113 to 118, 120 to 136, and 146 to 150. And these this collections are the Halal, Halal psalms. Sorry. Hallel means praise in Hebrew, and these psalms were sung during annual feasts. The first set, 113 to 118, often called the Egyptian Hallel, as they were normally recited or sung at the Passover dinner. Psalm 113 and 114 were recited or sung before the Passover meal, and Psalm 115 to 118 after the meal. Joah is referencing this particular psalm as a not so subtle reminder that it was Yahweh that rescued them from Egypt and it was Yahweh that delivered them into the promised land. The phrase, from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, is not a description of time, but of distance. From the east to the west, as far as they go, Yahweh will be praised. According to one ancient tradition, Yahweh expected worship from Israel in every place he caused his name to be remembered, as we can re read in Exodus 20, verse 24. This is indeed the case, because his people have been and still are scattered all over the world. Since Yahweh is creator, it is only natural that all creation should praise his name as we can read in one, Psalm 148, 148. The last interesting point is, in every place incense and pure offerings will be brought to me. 
In the Hebrew scriptures, in Exodus 30, verse 7 and 8, God commanded the priest who stood before the altar of incense to burn the incense from morning and evening. This happened at the first tabernacle and later in the temple in Jerusalem. The incense and offerings were known as the Ketoret. Throughout the year, the Ketoret was burned twice daily on the golden altar that stood within the inner section of temple. This was different from the outer altar where sacrifices were made. The highlight of the day of atonement, um, Yom Kippur, service was the high priest entering the Holy of Holies with a pan of smoldering coals in the one hand and a ladle filled with ketoret in the other, and then placing the ketoret over the coals and leaving once it was filled with the fragrant smoke. As I read about ancient Jewish practice, found out that the Talmud relates that it was believed that the offering the incense would bring blessings of wealth to the one who offered it on the altar. It was decided that as many different priests as possible should have an opportunity to do this service. Thus, no priest was assigned to this task more than once in a lifetime. In fact, Zechariah, the priest, was making the incense offering when the angel appeared to him in Luke 1 verse 8 and 11 to announce the birth of his son, later known as John the Baptist. The pure offerings refer to unblemished, ceremonial, clean offerings to Javeh. God is rebuking the priests for refusing to distinguish between the pure and the polluted sacrifices. Okay, brothers, let's dive into the application. The first time that Michael, that's the writer of this Bible study, and his wife experienced incense in a Christian ceremony was when they attended a service at an old Orthodox monastery in Romania. Men were on one side and women on the other. There were no chairs, and most stood, but some knelt in reverence. Towards the end of the service, the priest left the altar and walked down the middle of the church between the two sides, swinging the censer filled with burning incense. And as the smoke rose and the priest passed by, they smelled one of the sweetest and most wonderful scents they ever experienced. It helped them understand far better the image they saw or they see in Revelation. In Revelation 5 verse 8 tells us, and when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, where, which are the prayers of the saints. And Revelation 8 verse 3 and 4 says, Another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He has given much incense to the offer, with the prayers of all God's people and the golden altar in front of the throne. The smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of God's people, went up before God from the angel's hand. Did you ever think that our prayers are like incense, rising to God? David sings in Psalm 131, verse 2, Let my prayer be counted as incense before you, and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. I have a confession to make or yeah me too and it, it can be for all of you when we struggle with prayer it, this doesn't mean that we don't pray but it's just one of those um, and this is what Michael is, is writing um, he's just one of those whose prayers are short and sweet well we can easily spend hours in the word we can find it very hard spending more than five minutes in solid prayer as a chore. Of course, we all understand that it isn't the length of our prayers or the fancy words we use, rather it is the heart. And we can definitely praise God for that. But still, when he reads that my prayers are like incense to the Almighty God, we must be humbled. We can be humbled. And brothers, sisters, take some time today and examine your prayer life. 
Some of you are wonderful prayers and don't stop that because I can imagine the sweet aroma of the incense. But if you are like me and like Michael, you know that we could do better. Ask God to make your prayers like incense, heartfelt, beautiful and pleasing to him. May God bless you. I hope to see you in the next Bible study.